There are anti-inflammatory drugs that may reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease, but stomach, liver, and kidney toxicity precludes their widespread use. So maybe using an anti-inflammatory food, like the spiced turmeric found in curry powder, could offer the benefits without the risks? Before even considering putting it to the test, though, one might ask, well, do populations that eat a lot of turmeric have a lower prevalence of dementia? They may actually have the lowest reported prevalence of dementia in Alzheimer's. OK, so far so good. But maybe because it's such an impoverished area that people just don't live very long. So you need to know more than just prevalence, how many Alzheimer's cases are walking around, but the incidence of the disease, how many new people are coming down with it every year, which reflects the kind of true rate of disease occurrence. In rural Pennsylvania, the incidence rate of Alzheimer's disease among seniors is 19. 19 people in 1,000 over age 65 develop Alzheimer's every year in rural Pennsylvania. In rural India, using the same diagnostic criteria, that same rate is 3, confirming they have among the lowest reported Alzheimer's rates in the world. Although there isn't much to go on, the lower prevalence of Alzheimer's in India is generally attributed to the turmeric consu consumption as part of curry, and it's assumed that people who use turmeric regularly have a lower incidence of the disease, but let's not just assume. A thousand people tested, and those who consumed curry, at least occasionally, did do better on simple cognitive tests than those that didn't. Those that ate curry often had only about half the odds of showing cognitive impairment after adjusting for a wide variety of potential confounding factors. This suggests that curry consumption may be associated with better cognitive performance. Of course, it probably matters what's being curried. Are we talking chicken masala or chana masala, with chickpeas instead of chicks? It may be no coincidence that the country with the, among the lowest rates of Alzheimer's has among the lowest rates of meat consumption, with a significant chunk of the population eating meat-free and egg-free diets. We've known uh, for over 20 years now that those who eat meat, red meat or white meat, appear between two to three times more likely to become demented compared to vegetarians. And the longer one eats meat-free, the lower the associated risk of dementia, whether or not you curry favor with your brain. The top killers in the United States are heart disease, cancer, and stroke. Number five, accidents. Number nine, kidney disease. Number 13, high blood pressure. Then Parkinson's disease. Over the last 50 years, they've all stayed relatively stable, except this one. Starting out of nowhere just a few decades ago, and now is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. What is it? Alzheimer's disease. Last year was the seventh leading cause of death. This year, the sixth. keeps creeping up. Over the last decade or so, we've been making some progress on some of the other top killers, but not Alzheimer's. Enter the saffron crocus. Saffron, in the treatment of patients with Alzheimer's disease, it was a double-blind randomized trial measuring cognitive dysfunction in Alzheimer's patients comparing saffron to placebo. Saffron is the female reproductive organs of the saffron flower, which we can buy as a spice. So what did they find? You give Alzheimer's patients placebo capsules, and as you can see, their cognitive dysfunction gets worse over time. That's what happens in Alzheimer's. You get worse and worse until you die. Unless, it appears, you spice up your life with a little saffron. Conclusion. This double-blind placebo-controlled study suggests that at least in the short term, 16 weeks, 
Saffron is both safe and effective in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. Larger confirmatory randomized controlled trials are called for urgently, given the devastation wrought by this disease. But even if this study was a total fluke, what's the downside of adding a little saffron to our diet, a spice that's been cooked with for 3,500 years? I don't know about you, but God forbid if anyone in my family were ever diagnosed with this disease horror, I'd be cooking them some paella.